Henry, I cannot hear the music, Henry. No music yet. Okay, okay. No music. No music. No music. Background music. It's okay.
Serum Industrial Research is the pioneering force for industrial and technological innovation in Malaysia. Serum's vision as best partner for innovation corresponds with a demand-driven approach to accelerate technology innovation and commercialization ventures into the marketplace. Market-oriented technological platforms known as Industrial Center of Innovation or IC Innovation, focusing on nanotechnology, biomedical, industrial design, energy management, sensors and bio-natural gas are to support the industries in enhancing innovative capabilities and increase productivity in their pursuit to move up the values. Nanotechnology IC Innovation in Nanotechnology focuses on the development and applications of nanomaterials with the emphasis on nanomaterials characterization, coating materials, metallic and ceramic material, and friction materials processing. Biomedical IC Innovation in Biomedical expedites the technology readiness level and commercialization of indigenous biomedical products, focusing on R&D, new product development using additive manufacturing technologies and provides ISO 17025 accredited testing solutions. Energy management, promoting energy efficiency and exploiting renewable energy sources are the focus of the innovation in energy management. Its services include energy audit, consultancy for renewable energy use and energy storage for mobile and stationary applications. Industrial design, value creation, efficient manufacturing, smart and more customization are the route for Industry 3.0 to move towards Industry 4.0. IC innovation in industrial design plays a vital role in ensuring innovative designs are engineered with precision and limitless possibilities. Its core activities are additive manufacturing, simulation and engineering analysis. Sensor the IC Innovation Insert takes lead in integrated sense system. Photonics and biosensitive solutions provide inroads into the field of connectivity, data volume, safety, security, and system flooding. Its role in creating intelligent factories, enhance connectivity, produce more smarter products will support the objective of Industry 4.0 in reducing downtime, enhance efficiency, and lower operational costs. Naturals. IC innovation in bionatural gas enables innovative solutions in trend, distribution and utilization of bionatural gas as an important new energy source. Its technological solution services include plant design and processing technology, consulting on process engineering and biogas performance verification. For any inquiries, kindly contact these numbers. Serum Industrial Research, Industrial Center of Innovation. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to all the participants. Thank you so much for joining us in our webinar for today, Empowering Malaysian SME with an Adoption of Smart Manufacturing. My name is Mimi Mastura Ahmad from Group Strategic Planning of Sirim Berhad is the MC for today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall begin with a video presentation on the launching ceremony of Sirim 3D Printing Marketplace. The ceremony was launched by Yang Borhomat, Datuk Lim Ban Hong, Deputy Minister of International Trade and Industry on 6 August 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and relax. Hadirin sekalian, saya juga ingin berkongsi mengenai dengan pelancaran SIRIM 3D Printing Marketplace yang turut diadakan pada hari ini. Untuk makluman semua, My 3D, My 3D Printing Marketplace merupakan sebuah portal yang dibangunkan oleh Perika untuk Perika. Dan portal ini akan menjadi medium bagi para Perika untuk berhubung dan berkongsi idea sesama mereka dalam industri mereka bentuk, teknologi serta pembuatan. Ini terbukti apabila terhasilnya rekaan uh, pelindung muka yang um, ringkas, inovatif untuk digunakan oleh frontliners dalam memerangi COVID-19 baru-baru ini. Pengguna portal bukan saja boleh uh, 
mempunyai akses kepada reka bentuk yang dikongsi malah mereka juga boleh memuat naik serta memuat turun data yang dikongsikan di portal berkenaan dan portal ini memberi ruang kepada mereka untuk menjana pendapatan apabila terdapat pengguna lain yang menggunakan portal ini dan mencetak rekaan 3D mereka seterusnya membina portfolio sebagai mereka This is the first platform for its kind for 3D printing. Since March 2019, this portal has been open to the independent designers, technology entrepreneurs, and any manufacturing companies. It is a platform for designers to connect and share ideas with each other in the design, technology, and manufacturing industries. Yang berbuat datuk, may I invite you to launch my 3D printing marketplace. Please welcome. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Knowing that we are still in this battle of fighting COVID-19, please stay safe and be strong. Adieus to all the SOPs written by the government. Welcome to our launch today. We are thrilled to launch our 3D printing marketplace in Malaysia, the first of its kind in the country. Over here, you will gain access to more than hundreds of designs ready to be printed. You are free to share your ideas and creativity at this portal or you can download the available 3D model in place. With my 3D PM, all you need is just imagination. The pool of 3D printers we have gathered in-house and through our network will ensure every design materializes even without your own printer. You can own the prototype and be the proud technocrat that you dream about. We have never been more excited and today, we are bringing the 3D printing experience closer to the people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yang Bombat Datuk, for launching the My 3D Printing Marketplace. May I invite Dr. Sharul to lead uh, Yang Bombat Datuk and honourable guests to the demonstration of My 3D, My 3D uh, Printing Marketplace. Please welcome. As you can see, the, our YB wearing a visor uh, from the system of my 3D printing marketplace, engraving his name. Did the shadow finish? Finish already, yeah? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this ceremony. We'd like to thank uh, YB Dato and honorable guests for attending to our event today, and also others to your support. And thank you to the Secretariats for making this event a success. Ladies and gentlemen, before I hand over the session to our moderator, Mr. Muhammad Fauzi Ismail, please allow me to brief on his profile. Mr. Muhammad Fauzi's current position in Sirim Berhad is a director of Industrial Center of Innovation in Energy Management, Sirim Industrial Research, with over 30 years of experience in the industry. He provides industrial consultancy and technology solution in the areas of energy efficiency, renewable energy, and energy storage for SMEs. He is also the National Director of International Funded Global Environment Facility, GEF, and the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, Solar Thermal Project. Mr. Mohamad Fauzi is an expert in energy auditing, system optimization, solar thermal design and analysis, photovoltaic design, and lithium-ion battery system design. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now hand over the session to Mr. Muhammad Fauzi. Over to you. 
Thank you, Mr. Ramsey, Mimi, for that short and sweet introduction. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Very good morning, and welcome to today's webinar entitled "Empowering Malaysians SME with an Adoption of Smart Manufacturing." This program is brought to you by Siring in collaboration with 3D Gen Sydney Bahad, empowered by Protec. For online participants out there, you can join this webinar through Siring Facebook and Siring YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, to discuss on this special and important topics, I have with me here three distinguished panelists. Allow me to introduce all the panelists first. On my left, Dr. Masharu Azmi Ahmad Yusof is currently the director of Industrial Centers of Innovation in Smart Manufacturing. With over 18 years of experience in the industry, the center he's in charge offers computer-aided design, reverse engineering, computational fluid dynamics, or called CFD, finance elements analysis, FEA, 3D printing and prototyping. And prototyping. Dr. Shahro specialized in acoustic detections and signal processing for preventive maintenance. Please welcome Dr. Shahro. The next panelist, further to my left, is Dr. Isha of 3D James Sidon Bahar. Dr. Isha is the founder and director of TV Jensen and Bahad with over 70 years of experience in the industry. He's primarily involved in creating awareness and capabilities on 3D printing in order to support the growth and developments of the industry. His company trains new bricks of 3D designers to exploit full potential of this destructive technology. Please welcome Dr. Isa. And the third speaker sitting on my far left is Mr. Che Don Tang. Mr. Che is a senior consultant in seeding industrial research with over 25 years of services. His technical expertise lies on product designs and development, production planning and scheduling, and process improvement. He is very much involved in seeding Frankhofer technology audit as well as MIT Industry Forward Readiness Assessment Program. Please welcome Mr. Che Dante. Ladies and gentlemen, let me set the context of our seminar, or our webinar rather today. SME forms the backbones of Malaysian's economy, where nearly 99% of the total established enterprise in Malaysia are SME providing over 65% employment in the country, contributing 23% of the total export, while maintaining significant contribution of nearly 41% of the Malaysian GDP. Having recognized the importance of SME, Malaysians SME are continuously facing challenges amidst a global pandemic COVID-19. These are affecting the global business community. As the economy is recovering from the global pandemic, SMEs are now struggling to sustain business continuity in this difficult time. Given the fact that SMEs and Malaysia are predominantly of low skill labor, having low productivity, and coupled with highly dependence on foreign cheap labor, SME needs to embrace changes in particular, adopting technologies and innovation. Riding on the fourth industrial revolution, fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0. Ladies and gentlemen, the government of Malaysia has taken a bold decision in 2018 when MIT launched Industry Forward, a national policy on industry 4.0 to prepare and future-proof Malaysian SME into the next decade. 
Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our session, let's watch the short video first on Industry 4.0. It is estimated that by 2025, the total economic impact of the Internet of Things within factories will be up to $3.7 trillion per year. Now the industry is entering the exciting industry 4.0. It is a transition powered by data and automation technology that could transform every step of the manufacturing process. Welcome to Smart Manufacturing. Coming future, life cycles of the product will become shorter, whereas product variants will become progressively larger. In that case, organization and departments will have to align in order to meet customer need. However, the devices that are being used in industries today are digital but disconnected, in which result breakdown, slow processing speed, change in customers' requirement, and many more challenges are being faced. Hence, smart manufacturing with collaboration of serum will be required to make operations quick, flexible, and cost-effective. Area of services Research and development Training and consultancy Cellular Integrated Information System Heat Monitoring QR Code Implementing IoT In simple words, operational technology and information technology working together resulting more efficiently and productively. Serum four main components of smart manufacturing are Internet of Things, Cloud Computing, Digitalization, and Smart Computing. Under Serum COE model of collaboration on smart manufacturing, we provide competency by enhancing and developing in-house and national expertise and competencies. In 2019, Serum is providing readiness assessment service to identify gaps and recommendations for manufacturing companies to adapt Industry 4.0. Okay, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in this webinar, the rules of the game is this: I will divide the sessions into four rounds. Okay, and for every round, I will pose a question to each panelist, and each panel, each panelist basically is given a maximum of three minutes to respond to my question every round. After four rounds, if we have more time, basically we will entertain questions from the online audience. We should be filtered by our means. Let us start our first round. My first question is directed to Dr. Sharo of Siri. Dr. Sharo, the word smart has often been used for smartphone smart building, smart cities, and etc. In a nutshell, how do you define smart manufacturing? And how is it different from what we see today in a factory? 
Okay, thank you so much for the questions, uh, the Fauzi. I think in a nutshell, I mean, first question is, uh, is am I smart enough to answer that kind of questions? But anyway, uh, jokes aside, I mean, smart manufacturing. If you go online, if you uh, ask the questions, what are the definitions of smart manufacturing, immediately you will see that it will be a fully integrated collaborative manufacturing systems that use the AI in solving the needs of the consumers. That is the, the I would say the complicated definition of it. But if I were to define it in a simple term, so okay, the common denominator that you have between smart city, smartphone and, and whatnot is the word smart itself. So what does it mean by smart? I mean, if you go to the dictionary, you will see the smart is always the utterly uh, fast intelligence thingy. Okay, that's smart. When you're intelligent and you're fast, you make decisions much faster than other people. So you understand the questions even before the people asking the questions. And then if you look at the word manufacturing, what does it mean by that? Manufacturing is when you take the elements of things, bring it together and produce a product, which ideally you start selling them. That's a basic concept of it. So now what you have, what you want in the future will be smart way, of, intelligent way of doing things. If the products to be a product of Machikia, for example, of Karipa, I mean, by definitions, what you want in the future will be the intelligent way of producing Karipa. Now come to your second question. You were asking that, how is it different from today? So if you imagine the, uh, you were watching the video just now, you saw the video. I mean, you see the revolution from 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 to 4.0. What do you understand by that? I mean. If you take the example of Machikia producing that particular karipa, Machikia have evolved over the periods of how many years within that revolutions? Maybe 1.0. If you imagine 2.0, when the mass, what called the mass manufacturing methods come in place, that's where the time of Machikia getting all the one kampung to work for her and to produce a karipa much faster than usual. Okay. That was 2.0. And then in 3.0, what Machikia did was the, the the factory of Machikia now have got robots that will replace all the workers within the factories, okay? which can go much faster than usual, where you can increase the productivity tremendously. And then what happened in I4.0? So these are the questions that people keep on asking me, what happened? So I say there will be a time now, which you imagine that you wake up in the morning, Machikia will wake up in the morning, she knows each and every bit of the of the order okay. it will be a mass customization which imagine that every morning Machikia will know that in order for her to produce curry pup, he she will know how many people will want curry pup, kentang, how many people will want curry pup, sardin and to be honest with you there will be a day that these machines or this manufacturing system will have these customizations that even if you desire a mix of karipap sardin and karipap kentang okay you think about it today and you get it tomorrow in the morning that's the future thank that's you what thank i'm looking at thank you Tejaro. that was a very you know a layman you know definition sort of, to explain what is smart the word that i caught basically integrated collaborative platform the idea is to be to stay ahead of the game Yes. Okay. Okay, now, uh, my second question, moving to the next panelist, Dr. Iza. Okay. Dr. Iza, recently, Deputy Minister of Miti launched my 3D PM, Malaysia first 3D printing marketplace and community, a platform created by Syrian and TD Jens in Bahar. Can you share with the audience here? And also, online audience, what this platform is all about and how it helps and serve the industry, the engineering fraternity, as well as the community at large. Over to you, Reza. Thank you, uh, Adi Bozzi. Eh? All right, okay, to the, your question, yeah, about my 3D PM. My 3D PM actually means that my 3D printing marketplace, you know. The idea is simple, you know, we want uh, people to have access to uh, this uh, wonderful technology, uh, history printing technology. 
So that's the idea. If you look at the uh, website itself, you know, and uh, we have uh, three main tab, which is we have the um, uh, the uh, designers design uh, tab, which is the designers can actually share their um, their design. They can showcase any design. You know, it's, it's not limited to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to any application. You know, you can put any design. There. So this is the first platform that is able. To, to allow uh, our Malaysian designers to showcase the design that, in a way, related to 3D printing. Because if you look at 3D printing technology, you know, it's a design and print. You know? Anything that you can design, you can print out. So the first when uh, Dr. Sharu and Sirim uh, actually uh, moved the ideas uh, to how actually we want to reach uh, the industry. Right? to you Because 3D printing technology is new to us. Is really new to us, and uh, because the advance of the uh, you know materials and the advance of the mission itself, you know, it's become very, very you know. And then during pandemic, you can see how this technology actually helped us to uh, respond very really fast. So it is um, a new technology that we want that uh, the industry to to get involved with. So because of that, you know, so we we come up with the ideas to to have this uh, particular platform which allow the industry to go in to get the um, the uh, to get to know what exactly 3 printing so we have a design uh, tab that you can actually put your design you can upload design you can download design you can command any design uh, in this platform and we also have this learn uh, tab that we share you know because i think uh, serum has been involved in the 3 d printing technology quite some time already and uh, they have experience, they have knowledge, and then even have resources. And um, uh, that's why we put it in uh, another uh, this learn tab uh, to, to share the, uh, the experience, to share the knowledge with the industry. And in a way, to share the success stories too, you know, because to, sh to, to give them confidence that 3 d printing can do uh, all these uh, wonderful things. And uh, the last one that we have is the marketplace, which is a store. It's all about 3 printing. You want to get the uh, 3 printing machine, you can get 3 printing materials, all is there. So this is the, um, the, uh, the main ideas that we have to, uh, to, uh, to the industry to use it, uh, this platform, and also available on the mobile apps. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, great, thank you, Liza. In a nutshell, my 3D print is a design platform. It's somewhere that we can learn, and also a marketplace where people can source all these different, you know, materials for 3D printing purposes. If right? I may add, uh, yeah, uh, Haji, uh, you know, this platform also allows you to have an instant, uh, you know, okay. quotation, and so you oh, can. Oh, you know, okay. And business. since it is available on the mobile apps, you know, okay. you can download your design, and you just straight away get. The okay. price of uh, you know, to oh, wonderful, things. wonderful. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Deza, for that. You know, uh, very relevant, you know, sharing on his uh, whatever platform. Okay, moving on to the third speakers, uh, Mr. Chair Don Tanks. Okay, Mr. Chair, Hi. you are basically formally or personally very much involved in many technology audits by Siring, as well as Miti Industry Forward Readiness Assessment of SME in the country. Based on the numbers of tech audit and RAs of readiness assessment by CRIM, where do you see SMEs today? Are they prepared for industry 4.0? Okay, over to you. Thank you, Stay. Jay Fauzi. Uh, yeah, uh, through uh, MITI programs, uh, there are a series of uh, programs. Uh, let me share with you two of the programs. The first program is a technology audit program, is a under Sirin Fraunhofer program. This one, uh, we assess uh, and evaluate uh, SME in terms of uh, technology readiness. So it's the same thing, uh, we assess on site and uh, look at the company operation, business operation, technology management, how they manage technology. This is the first one, technology audit. Uh, to date, uh, we have uh, assessed and uh, audited uh, over 800 SMEs since uh, 2016. This program is under Rancangan Malaysia ke 11 from 2016 to 2020. Uh, this is the first program. The second program, 
uh, offer by MITI is uh, under this uh, industry forward readiness assessment. So this industry readiness assessment started since 2019. Uh, so uh, 2019, we target to have uh, 500 companies to be assessed. And uh, this year, 2020, we target 450 companies. Okay, through this assessment, uh, what do we do is uh, we evaluate companies' uh, readiness in terms of technology, uh, in terms of people readiness, in terms of process readiness. So these are three C factor, people, process, and technology, three C factors. And uh, we subdivided into eight trusts, uh, sorry, seven trusts and uh, 21 dimension. So if yes, uh, we have uh, thus far co compiled the data and uh, most of the companies are uh, falls under uh, newcomer category. New com company, uh, new category, newcomer category means uh, it's a uh, falls under 20 to 40 percent. Total is 100 percent. Okay. Uh, don't worry so much about the scoring. Scoring is just to show that whether the company is ready to transform and uh, to industry 4.0. So it's, uh, the scoring is from zero to 100. Okay. Uh, most SME, they fall under 20 to 40. Uh, the profile is called newcomer. Some slightly better company, uh, they fall under learner category. Learner category uh, is uh, between 40 to 60%. Yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I think uh, we are not too far behind. We still have to do a lot of catch up, by the way. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I think we have so far established case for change. We need to transform our SMEs into smart manufacturing. But this change is not an easy decision, okay? Let alone, it's a journey. Let's move on to the second round. <clears throat> Moving into the second round, so let's take a deep, say a, a deep drive, a deep dive into the rationals of moving into this digital transformation of becoming smart manufacturing. My first question to Dr. Sharon. Okay. Dr. Sharon, Sirin has established ICI smart manufacturing in response to local call for a dedicated industrial centers of innovation to propel the agenda of smart manufacturing, especially for local SMEs. Please shed some light the participants out there, especially the SME. What technical facilities, what expertise CDF can offer to the industry? And secondly, how these services in terms help the SME? Over to you, Mr. Jaro. Thank you. Okay, the questions are divided into two parts. The first part is what can we can offer. So the first question that we need to ask, uh, I mean, when the industry want to convert or want to advance from 3.0 to 4.0 bit from 2.0 to 4.0 first and foremost you must have the tools to do that you must understand what are the technologies that are required for them to change okay so you can never change without understanding that particular tools so now uh, with MITI uh, they have come up with the industry forward policy about two years ago uh, within the policy they have come up with the pillars of technology that are required, which ideally these are the contents of uh, knowledge that you must be able to know for you to propel from 3.0 to 4.0. So what if you if you list down the spectrum of technologies, things like uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, additive manufacturing, the what do you call the uh, AI, the VA, and whatnot, or the entire spectrum of it, the 11 pillars of it. All of it is available in CDIP. If, if you look at the competency level being a scale of 1 to 10, some of it, probably, we probably had it at that scale of 1, 2, or 3. But in that case, what we can do is we know where to get the technology from. If you are not able to do it, so basically we either have the expert in house or we know where to get the experts. But to be honest, what we are offering here is that we have, if you have the far left being a scientist working in the left, in the lab, sorry, 
and then on the far right you have uh, the owner of a factory so we know these people we have been working closely with these people so i've i mean i would say that i have friends in universities that i know very well that we know very well that are working on the fundamentals and can help us to to, to match this to the required uh, demand of growth, to the required technology to the industry. Yeah. So these are our office. So what with that, what do the industry get? Okay. The moment that you induct into this I 4.0, you, as, as I told you earlier, the smart manufacturing, you are become, become smarter than the rest. Okay. So you have, when you are smarter, it's all down to you now. Can either take advantage of that situation, so that you can be a we got the fairest of them all, or you can be the richest among them all. Okay. So we are helping you in creating that values by create by increasing your productivity and at the same time to ensure that your cost will be much lower than what you have today. Thank you, thanks, Mr. Jago. So I think the the point is that Mr. Jago, what to impress upon you all that. CDM has got all the pillars of technology covered under industry 4.0. And if you don't have that, we know where to source it, right, Mr. Yes. Okay, so, and so things, uh, the SMEs can benefit a lot from whatever offering by CDM to stay ahead of the game, to capitalize on our expertise and resources, uh, and of course, to monetize it. Okay. My second question is uh, I want to pose this to two. Rota Isha, okay. Rota Isha, you are among the pioneers, I'm saying, who embark on these 3D printing services. And the platform you created, my 3D PN, is, I call it an enabler, that connect community to the 3D printing marketplace. Please make me understand which segments of industry or community you are serving and how do you monetize these kind of services? All right. In, in terms of the industry, I believe that it is 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 not limited to any now. You know, you can actually get into engineering, automotive, you know, medical, everything. Uh, because the platform actually allows you to um, to put any design that you want. But it is able to uh, to uh, to find a way, you know, how to manufacture your part. Uh, in 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 um, using a different type of technology, so during the, uh, this platform actually you know we have um, you know uh, collaborators or strategy partners, you know saying like Serum and us, um, uh, Serum has uh, uh, SLS you know, polymer printing uh, um, uh, machine, and then others maybe have a different type of machine, so like metal printing, you know. So with this platform we can offer all this to the industry so it's not limited to because certain industry use a specific material specific um, uh, process of doing uh, their own uh, part which we have to meet certain requirement right. but it is hard to find a company that can have all this machine together so with this platform we, we can actually consolidate resources that we have in malaysia and to offer to any industry so that's why you know you can go to medical you can go to automotive you know, even aerospace or oil and gas and you can do that but through our database you know we see you know there are 670 680 uh, user that active user that use this platform and out of 600 over you know 40 percent is uh, engineer you know and we have 30 percent kind of like hobbies or, or, or individual that that that, that look into a, a different type of application. Yeah. Uh, so it is quite a, a, a multidisciplinary background of people that are actually interested to to get into this uh, this platform. And the uh, um, second question is on yeah, the monetization. <laughs> Basically, this platform is similar to like Lazada or something, but okay. it is on the uh, 3D printing services. Yeah? Okay. So definitely, but we are not really looking into, you know, making money, but what we aim is that to let people use this platform right? to convert from, you know, instead of use, you have to burn on a CD, you know, save your file. Right? No longer that, you know, you so your design, you can upload in using a digital platform, fully digital platform in terms of uh, producing your profile. 
So that's our main actually um, aim for this. Okay, great, great. Uh, congratulations to you guys. Huh? Basically, you have only uh, more than 600 active users in the platform and serving wide range of the industry players. You mentioned from engineering, medical, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Especially for designs of uh, metal implants, yeah. things like that, okay? Yeah. Including several space and all like that. Yeah. That's, a, I would say, very broad, you know, uh, set for industry. Okay, so moving on to the third question. This is still second round, I'm such a, okay? Uh, such a, Many SMEs are, I would say, quite complacent, you know. It's what they have achieved so far. And to the point that there is basically no urgent needs for them to change, okay. That's our SMEs, okay. Let alone embark on something, something that is very unfamiliar sphere to them, okay. A case for change, what are compelling reasons for SMEs to adopt smart manufacturing. Yeah. We've been saying that again and again in the past, but it's not easy to move that, to adopt these kind of changes. It's like a big dinosaur with big inertia, okay? So how do you see BT can assist this SMB in this particular digital transformation journey? Yeah, I'm now asking you, you know, if you are involved in this BT program, how do you see this BT and ceiling can help in this whatever journey? Wow, oh, it's a, yeah. a very tough question. <laughs> yeah, indeed, very tough. Such a... Okay, uh, yeah. SME, as you all know, SME, they have uh, limited resources. Limited resources in terms of uh, manpower, in, ter in terms of scale, in terms right. of uh, financially. Uh, but uh, SME, in order to survive uh, in this uh, globalization era, they have to be competitive. So in order to be competitive, they have to be efficient. They have to increase their productivity. Okay. But uh, as, of, as of now, most of the SME, they are manufacturers, contract manufacturers. They don't really do design. They are lack of uh, innovation. Okay how to improve uh, efficiency and productivity. Uh, there are many ways uh, from the uh, very economical way, uh, you can proceed uh, approach using the lean management way. Lean management way, you study your process, you reduce your waste, uh, improve your process flow, business process flows, operational process flow. So this is the most economical way. And uh, another one, it will be through digital transformation. Uh, using this uh, industry 4.0 enabling technologies. So there are 11 enabling technologies. So uh, it would be good that uh, SME can transform using these uh, technologies to increase their productivity. Um, okay, how, okay, second part of the question. How MITI can uh, help uh, industry SME to uh, transform? Uh, MITI already launched this uh, national policy on industry forward. Uh, in 2018 and uh, since last year we have started to do the assessment so first step uh, we have this uh, industry forward readiness assessment okay. so we uh, go on site we visit the companies we identify what are their problems okay uh, we will study the existing uh, status as is and uh, what is the ideal best practice uh, using smart manufacturing technologies so through there, uh, we, we identify this gap, uh, we will propose an uh, action plan. So uh, next step with this action plan, our uh, company can apply for MITI funding and grant. Funding, that's, yeah. that's yeah, that, interesting. That, that's the most interesting part. Yeah, that's interesting. Can yeah. you share more about this funding? Is there an opportunity? Uh, okay, there, 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 are, there are a lot of funding available. Okay, okay we, we share the two common ones. Okay. The first one is the intervention project which is uh, uh, applicable for SME. Okay, okay. Uh, it's uh, uh, subsidized by government. 70% uh, uh, subsidized by the grant is okay. equivalent to 500,000. Oh, that's very attractive then. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. This, this is the first one. The second one will be the DISF, Domestic Investment Strategic Fund. Okay. Uh, this is uh, applicable for both uh, small and medium and large company. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you, thank you, Zoom. Thank you for that very, you know, details, you know, explanation, where are the available funding, you know, such a make it clear that to stay competitive, you need to move. You need to make these changes. Okay. Okay, now let's move on to the third round. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, Malaysian SME has been bombarded with this new poll initiative by the government. Okay. Industry forward, digital transformation, smart manufacturing, and so on and so forth. Many of them perhaps know what it is. SME knows what it is. But the government's calling for basically. However, they find it a bit difficult. How to embark on this digital journey? No, it's one thing, but how to do it? Okay. So my first question to Mr. Chair, to you first. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. From government perspective, mm -hmm. okay, and your own personal experience, what are the major hindrances and stumbling blocks faced by the SME? towards adopting this smart manufacturing today. Is it technology? Is it human capital? Or is it money? Or funding? Please, over to you. OK. Uh, OK, there are still perspective. Uh, if you look at the framework we use to do readiness assessment, there are three main uh, shift factors. People, process, and technology. Okay. In order to transform, our company need to look at these uh, three uh, shift factors. In terms of people, uh, take an example. People, the company must have uh, ready to transform. They need to come up with a strategy, proper strategy. A lot of company they don't have a proper roadmap. Where are they today? Where they want to move tomorrow and for future? Uh, this is a perspective in terms of people, and uh, company need to get their people ready in terms of skill, in terms of uh, knowledge and skill related to Industry 4.0. This is a very challenging part for yeah. SMBs. Human, um, human capital development. Yeah, human okay. capital development. This is the first uh, shift factor. Another shift factor will be process. Okay. A lot of companies, they like to jump into automation. Okay. They like to jump into uh, 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 using uh, uh, advanced technology. Okay. But uh, usually, we will propose company to study their process first. Uh, well, simple way is uh, optimize the process first, right? Yeah, yeah. Make Understand the process first. Make okay. sure the process is uh, smooth, okay. uh, reduce uh, unnecessary, okay. uh, non value added processes. Great, Once great. your process is ready, your process flow is smooth, business process, operational process is okay. ready, then only you think of uh, further automation using uh, applying the right technology. Right, right. The third perspective, uh, shift factor will be a uh, technology. Uh, then you are ready to apply technology. Uh, taking uh, one example of the shop floor. So most of the SME now, they are doing a lot of uh, manual operations, semi-auto uh, operation. Okay. They, they are lack of technology. Uh, so this is uh, have, having uh, produced a low yield, low productivity, not efficient. Okay. And uh, the, the data they collected uh, is not fully really used. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, we will propose company to first study their process, using a lean management uh, way, uh, then uh, thinking of uh, automation, then only uh, apply the advanced uh, enabling technology. In, uh, thank you, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. The point is that yeah. address your immediate concern, improve your processes before you even embark on something, yeah. automation uh, or industry for zero. Okay, so thank you for that. Uh, Expectations. Okay, now I'm moving on to Dr. Shahrukh. Um, <clears throat> Sirim has developed an ecosystem, you mentioned earlier, okay, to prepare SME's journey towards the digital transformations, including smart manufacturing. What would be your advice to SME out there when embarking on this mountain task ahead? And where to start? Well, quite similar to maybe Chile, but for your own perspective, yeah. I mean, you, you have the, well, the the method being told by Chia, uh, where yeah. we have the assessment. But the first thing first, I always tell this to the industry, get the objective right of why you are doing it. Okay. Why would you transform your business from what it is now to what you desire, just like 4.0? Yep, yeah, you need to understand what is the objective of doing it. So are you doing it to make more money? Are you doing it to make the world a better place to live? 
are you doing it to create a high paying job for the locals where we can get rid of the foreign labors are you doing it to bring the youngsters that are coming out from the universities what 200,000 300,000 of them every year to bring them into the industry what are we doing it for so get the objective right and then don't do it for the sake of doing it don't do it for the sake of doing it because the money is there very often we have this problem some people are just oh we have grants we have things that what she was talking about why don't you just tap it i said don't do it because of that do it because of the objective that you have taught okay and then there are four things that you need to to do to embark into if you really want to be that smart smart manufacturer the first thing first is number one is to digitize remember that machines don't talk the language that we talk so for as long as you are talking in the language that we are talking now it won't be possible because you need to be able to talk to the machine number two is you need to automate the process now you imagine the workers doing certain process you must be able to automate this process then only if you can give the instructions for the machine to work and number three to understand the brain which is the ai the artificial intelligence i've been trying to write a lot of articles on this in the newspaper you need to understand the way of thinking the way the ai works get some books get, get some readings just to understand the basis of it and number four is to have the brain and to have the capacity of thinking i.e by having the record this server where it wouldn't be a physical server that everything is there in the club so you have the capacity to do the thinking but first thing first as i was telling you benchmark yourself get to a meeting and, and, and look at the ra so that we can benchmark ourselves where are we using the right tools that have been developed by uh, by meeting you know where we, where you are and remember stick to the objective great great so back to the fundamental your main objectives okay so, so talking about objectives normally we cannot run away from some the government policy it has to come from the top sometimes <laughs> it's not easy so but at the company levels i fully agree with the shadow that we have to put all this step by step in place digitalization is a journey you have to start somewhere the first thing is basically to digitize and then automate and so on and so forth that's great and of course moving forward i think so we have to talk about cloud but that's the only way the 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 the, the, the sphere where industry 4.0 works okay i'm moving on to the third question uh, this question is supposed to the things are you are involved in this 3d printing you know industry for years so as industry players in 3d printing services where do you see the developments in progress of 3d printing in the next five to ten years and what are the challenges faced by the business faced by the industry player you like yourself okay when you try to meet the constantly changing needs of the industry or the customer yeah please All right thank you i think based on the uh, the forecast you know, and uh, they posted that three printing definitely will actually conquer the uh, the way how we do things you know okay. and uh, definitely change the way that how we uh, we do things and now we make it yeah? so uh, it is progress really fast and uh, due to this pandemic also you know it is actually promote you know speed up the whole process you know because people see you know how actually this this technology actually can uh, can help in the during the pandemic how we do a localization you know with this machine you know how you produce uh, parts really really fast you know uh, you can't do it uh, in other ways uh, uh, to 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 get your things you know by design today and get it by tomorrow no it's only 3d printing can allow that so the progress is definitely really really fast you know but sometimes it also causes uh, problems to us you know because we can't catch up with the um, the, uh, the technology itself and 
definitely we see you know there's a lot of potential in a certain certain areas uh, that really push um, this technology forward and uh, we can see you know the market trend now you know people are looking at personalization you know we used to have you know a uh, mass production but now we used to to a mass customization people want to have their own sunglasses people want to have their own shoes you know this actually promotes oh, the, uh, the yeah the development of the thing okay. you no know, there's certain application require customization you know like medical you need to have a, a specific implant for that particular patient okay. but now people are willing to pay willing uh, uh, even can afford to have their own uh, to, to have that that personalization mm -hmm. thing. so it definitely will promote the uh, progress uh, of uh, uh, technology and um, and you mentioned about challenges yeah now this comes with challenge you know as industry players like us you know uh, to actually uh, um, uh, uh, what we call it the high expectation of the uh, people you know the user itself uh, sometimes they think that it can do almost everything you know, they say oh you can do it you can do it very fast like like sometimes the realization is, is not that you know so we have to meet this expectation too at the same time to try to educate the industry that okay um, uh, this is what we can do now and you know, maybe in the in the two years time we can do better uh, that way and uh, another part is that on the high investment you know it involves really really you know um, if you're talking about 3d metal printing the material itself is expensive you know the mission is self expensive you know, this somehow will will not allow the industry like us to without the help of. So the let me interject you there. Do we have local capabilities in metal printing? Yes. Printing here? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but not many. Not you many. Know, the okay. private companies that I, I can say you know, in Malaysia at the moment, okay. the private companies that have all the mission, maybe two or three. Okay. Yeah. But that really do a services definitely you know, less than that, you know. So this is what we want, you know. And uh, I believe that you know with the um, uh, CRM involvement, this uh, definitely will help. You know how to collaborate each other. You know we have to collaborate. We need to have partners. You know to help in terms of you know because one industry maybe can look into specific application. Yeah. Right. I mean, one mission maybe can apply one thing, you know. If you have many people with a uh, different capabilities, definitely you can do more in terms of. Uh, Thanks, thank, yeah. thank you, thank you, Lisa. So, you know, in the past, personalization or customization may be meant for the royal, <laughs> <laughs> the upper class people, okay. <laughs> but nowadays, yeah. you know, this yeah. thing can go to other people like this. Yeah. We can ask for something personalized also. Well, mm. Okay, so this is so 3D printing makes things more affordable nowadays. Okay, so I think I, I agree with the Teza idea that you know resources are limited. We need to you know gather you know all these different resources, different organizations together. A marketplace like that you created, you know, where where the industry can benefit from. Okay, so. Okay, now coming to the fourth round. This is the final round. Okay, so final round basically talks about your future plan. Okay, who are you planning to do in the next five to ten years? Okay, Doctor Sharo, the first question to you. Fast forward, fast forward, ten years from today, ten years from today, can you share your major strategy, your plans towards realizing Shilin's vision best? Partners for innovation within the context of transforming SMEs today into smart manufacturing of tomorrow. What do you have in place, or what do you plan for that? Okay. Yeah, please. I mean, to begin with, I think if I were to start talking with the jargons of high performance zero, start talking about the, the the mega friends and all the technical teams of high performance zero, we're able to do that. But what we are trying to do is this, we, we're trying to simplify these jargons and to make people understand. Understand what it means and what, what is the, the reasons behind this I4.0. So before imagining the future, we, we in Syria have come up with a proper plan, proper 10 years plans. And we divide them into four different categories of P1, P2, P3 and P4. So in this plan, in P1, they call it routing the future readiness. 
So the past two, three years, I've been going all around to get everyone to be ready for the Industrial Revolution at 4.0. We do all the awareness, okay. so the policy makers, the industry themselves, the students. Okay. We're trying to prepare them. And then the, in, in P2, in chrono, I mean, you look, look at it as in, in chronological manner. Is it? In P2, we have the standardizations. The moment people start understand what is I4.0 is all about. And then we need to have the common understanding. So we need to have the standard. So we are now in the verge of developing a standard for I4.0 for the country. And as we go along, we are looking at the innovations accelerators as in the P3. So we need to innovate. We need to come up with things, with, with products that fits the narrative of I4.0. And then in P4, you got to understand, we need to retrofit to whatever that is already there, already in place. The manufacturing facilities are already in place. So we come in and we try to retrofit the I4.0. And this is what we are doing now. So the way we see it, the way I see it in that sense, that 10 years from now, smart people will no longer be thinking of themselves. Not saying that most of them are thinking of themselves now, but 10 years from now, smart people is just not thinking all about themselves. And then 10 years from now, the resources will be used wisely because the availability and the convergence of information will allow us to know who needs more and who needs less. Okay? And then smart manufacturing will be so smart like you are saying before that we produce good to, add the, to the asset requirements. Take for example, my, your, your telemate shirt. So mine is not telemate. So, okay. so I will be able to for that kind of tailor-made suits because why we are doing tailor-made products because the machines are so effective the manufacturing is so effective so efficient we can produce things mass customization customized for you and me at the price of mass production so it's ideally is is you're buying the suits at the hardware of Samana, but it's, it's for you and then in the future, the, the, the manufacturer will no longer be giants. Will no longer be giants, big giants, corporations in that sense. It will be a network of smaller enterprises, small enterprises working together. Oh. And this what, I, if you ask me, that's what I anticipate. Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Okay. So I wish you all the best in your whatever you know, future plan. And I hope whatever you have in your mind you know, will be translated into reality so. by you know the next 10 years. Okay. So uh, I'm moving to the Teresa. Okay. To the SME out there. What are messages that you want to impart to SME to prove that transforming into smart manufacturing is not an option? Okay. But a must to do, okay? If the local wants to stay relevant in the future, yourself, being industry, how do you want to send messages that you want to impart to all these SMEs out there? They say that you have other choice, but basically get on the web, then we yes. Okay, yeah, please is, say that. Yeah, like, like you say, yeah, it is a must to do. To stay relevant, you have to you, know, you have to transform yourself. And uh, if you look at the way that um, uh, how the organization act, yeah, you have to be agile enough. You have to be flexible enough to change the response. And 3D printing technology allowed you to have that kind of uh, option. You know, lean manufacturing. You know, so you have to to to, to adopt this technology to be still to stay relevant. And to change your your the way that you you do things, yeah. So I will suggest them, you know, to to really get into this thing, you know, transform, you know, take part by part. You know, you can start with the even on the digitization first. You know, make sure that all your design is is in a, in a digital. Use all these sophisticated software, and uh, what I can say is that get to know Siri. 
because I believe that Siri is like a one-stop center. Okay. You, you, they have these uh, resources, you know, like uh, the Sharu mentioned, so all the night pillars is here, you know, and they have the access to the funding. You know, this is one of the, um, I believe that people will ask you about this, you know, how are we going to get funding? This is high, like we discussed before, you know, the investment is high, you know, how can we do that? Yes. You know, where is the, uh, the, the place that we can go to get all this information. And so I believe that Sirim is, is, is the right place to go and get to know Sirim, you know, get to know where, how you're going to adopt this thing. Because people are definitely, you know, to change your behavior for the last 20 years, you never know about 3D scanning, you never know about 3D printing, and you never know about 4.0, you know? And suddenly you ask them to change, definitely. You know, they have their own investment, you know, they bought other machines. Uh, they put other ways of doing things and now you have to think. definitely they need help you know, industry need help then i believe that and i will urge all the smas to to get into you know even you can't you can't do it 100 percent do it five percent do it ten percent you know? well thank you thank you there's a there's a been mentioning come to city you know come to the third shack room for help yeah. city has got it all yeah. <laughs> so all the time is this okay so yeah, I think uh, I want to urge industries out there who are joining this webinar, talk to Siri, talk to us, since find out how we can be of service to them. Whatever you want to do, either 3D printing, or you want to go on this digital, you know, uh, transformation journey, just, just talk to us. I think, you know, we can discuss. And of course, there's a lot of fundings available uh, and we can facilitate the kind of process indeed. Okay, now uh, this is the last question uh, I'm going to pose to Mr. Chair. Okay. Oh, okay. okay, this is about updates, what you've done so far on readiness assessment. Okay. I would like you to share the status of this meeting in the follow programs offered to SME. How many areas have been performed so far? Okay. And how many industry 4.0 projects are ongoing? Maybe you can share some updates on that, Mr. Chair, please. Uh, okay. I will share some that, uh, the data that we have collected so far. Uh, uh, 2019, uh, BT has targeted uh, to assess about 500 companies, SMB, which is uh, assessment fees is uh, funded by government. 2019, about 500 companies. 2020, about 450 companies. And uh, how many intervention project? Okay, there are, there are two types of uh, main funding. One is an intervention project, which is uh, applicable for SME. Uh, and another one is a DISF, Domestic Investment Strategic Fund, which is uh, open for uh, uh, large, including large company. Okay, uh, for the intervention project, uh, MITI is targeting 65 projects this year. Okay, uh, this is uh, in charge under uh, MIDA. Okay, okay what, how, how's the process of applying? Are uh, they most, most important? Yeah. First, uh, SMB or large company uh, through uh, MITI or uh, MPC website, okay. they register online. Okay. Uh, then uh, MITI will do the uh, assessment and screening. Then, uh, if approved, uh, eligible, then uh, MITI Can you will... share some, some basic criteria you need to fulfill? Oh, okay. 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 Uh, it, it got to be uh, manufacturing. Uh, okay. uh, in fact, there are two categories. Uh. First okay. category, which is uh, already ongoing, is uh, man for manufacturing companies. Okay. Another category will be manufacturing-related uh, services. It will be uh, 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 coming soon. Uh. Okay. okay. The first uh, category is uh, manufacturing company register uh, online with uh, MITI or MPC. Okay, then uh, MITI will do the uh, uh, screening. Uh, must be a local uh, equity okay. uh, owned by a Malaysian uh, company. 100%? Yeah, um, at least 100%. Okay. Or, or more than 60%, I think. Oh, okay. if I'm not okay. mistaken. Okay. Uh, should be a, a majority of the equity should be Malaysian. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, then uh, it must be uh, in operation for at least, uh, if not mistaken, two, uh, three years. Three years. Uh, Okay. Uh, the detail you can uh, is available in uh, MITI website. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, then uh, if eligible, uh, MITI will send uh, assessment bodies uh, to uh, assess on site. 
you typically it will take uh, two days. Right. Okay, then a uh, company will receive a comprehensive uh, report, a readiness assessment report. Uh, uh, the assessor will write uh, some findings and a recommendation. Uh, with that report, uh, company can go for the grant or funding provided by uh, MITI. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chen, for the uh, sharing of information. Uh, I think we have completed four rounds of questions and answers and you know we like let's take a look at those questions coming from online audience okay okay maybe are we, are we ready to take okay. some questions from the audience okay question number one <clears throat> okay okay i want to pose this question to dr isa for he he, he produced tg designers you know <laughs> he produced new bricks of 3d designer okay but is, uh, is our local talents or expertise ready to embrace smart manufacturing technologies? Yes. Yeah. In 30 seconds. All right. 30 seconds. Yes. Yeah. Local talents. Local talents, if we can. Uh, if I, if you, um, I believe, yes. Yeah, you know, we can actually. We, we have our local talents um, on the uh, tributary technology. And okay. um, we have the resources to, okay. to, to work on this. Is our yeah. university but this small manufacturing this is too big you know, <laughs> you know which which area actually you want to okay. adopt you know but having said that you know um if we talk about 3d printing technology or manufacturing technology definitely you know we have the talent okay yeah. most of the universities you know what we encounter that they 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 have they produce uh, a lot of good students okay. you know, that understand about the um using of software on all these digital platforms Okay, Dr. Sharu, what do you think? I, funny enough, because because when you ask these questions, uh, I'm sitting beside a guy. Huh. This is a guy who's an expert in in 3D printing. Yeah. You're not talking about the in the country. Oh. He took his PhD in New Zealand. Oh. I've done research in New Zealand. Uh, so to, uh, to, uh, so. to to okay. to say that we don't have the expertise okay. where you have all the kids coming. I mean, you name any universities in the world. Okay. Name it, any university in the world. Okay. Ask them, have you got PhD holder from Malaysia? Which I'm sure, okay. I'm sure there will be one. So we have enough. It's just that the matching of it, of yeah. this need to be. I think we have question. it, but yeah. do we have the the, the, the numbers? The I mean, I mean, you got to ask the, yeah. the right question to the right people. Yeah, okay. that's about it. Then I think. Yeah. Okay, can we move on to the next question, please? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Oh, this is. I think there is a. This is a question for you. Can SMEs become a partner? for 3D printing certificates. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You know, this okay. is the uh, our yeah. main objective for creating yeah. the platform. Yeah, say to them. Yeah. Yeah. The platform. Yeah. So yeah. we are really, really uh, okay. uh, actually uh, want all the SMEs, you know, which involve in this 3D printing activities to, to join us, you know, to be okay. part of it. No, because in this uh, three printing technology ecosystem, supply chain, you have people that actually produce material. They have people that produce a machine and so we need all of them uh, to, 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 to be part of this platform so that we can actually concentrate. Okay, can you share some of the maybe latest innovative product coming out from this 3D printing? Oh, in, one particular, in, any, in any, any sectors of the industry? Share some? Uh, definitely, you know, if you yeah. can, because we can relate um, really, um, you know, on during this pandemic, you know, how actually we can produce all this face shield, you know, oh, fast okay. enough, you know, face mask, you okay. know, even the, the ventilators thing. You know, the, all these thing is is um, uh, can be produced through this uh, three printing. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you, Desa. Desa mentioned that you know we can produce it fast. Okay. So, okay. Now, uh, yes. Can we move on to the next question? Okay. This I think. Mr. Chair got to answer this question. Okay. Panelists know the current business situation. How best can government agencies, agencies like maybe, you know, see it, come out of this situation rather than investing in four, industry 4.0, four which small companies may not need? It's a politician. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a bit tough. Um, okay. Uh, okay. First. Uh, may not need how this thing happens. First thing, we need to identify what are the, the real needs of the company. That's why uh, first thing, usually we will study okay. what's the process flow. 
Okay. Uh, process will understand uh, which are the uh, critical processes okay. that will ensure they can uh, increase the productivity and uh, efficiency. Okay. Yeah, the point is that don't uh, simply embark on yeah. zero. Study the process until, first. Until your process is fully optimized and digitized first. And one thing, yeah. <laughs> there are 11 enabling technology, okay. but it doesn't mean that you have to apply all. Okay. Start right. small, start those relevant. Okay, okay, okay. great. Do we have any more? Oh, okay. Uh, question. Oh, okay. Okay, so, this is perhaps the, maybe the last question we can entertain then. Can you share how strong or how ready our SMEs to adapt smart manufacturing technologies? Yeah, this one I think, Rusharo, you can answer this question. This is like, like a yeah. very hard question yeah, to, I know. to answer. Can you share yeah. how strong, how ready our SMEs to adapt smart Okay, first and foremost, I can't, I can't mean out of the blue, I can't answer this. I think the first thing that they need to know is the how ready are they. So let's do that. Isn't it? Actually, I think I think yeah. One way is through the assessment. Through the assessment. Assessment. Yeah, we have trained assessor. Yeah, yeah we I have. say only twenty to forty mark. Yeah. So yeah. we have a long way to go. Huh? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. so, so, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we have come to the ends of this webinar session. You know, uh, it's already more than one hour already. You know, I would like to thank all the distinguished panelists, Dr. Sharo. Dr. Isaha and Mr. Cho for joining me basically in this webinar. Let's show our appreciation in the usual manner. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, thank you all for your participation. Here and those who joined through online means, FB, you know, uh, Zoom, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, then we shall meet again in a future event to come. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you very much uh, to the moderator of today's webinar, Mr. Muhammad Fauzi, and as well to our distinguished panelists for today, Dr. Sharul, Dr. Isha, and Mr. Che, for this very interesting and fruitful session. Ladies and gentlemen, may I express our gratitude also to you for your time and we hope to see you again for the next webinar and we shall let you know the date, uh, the date very soon. So stay tuned. With that, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and have a pleasant day. Stay safe everyone.